Hey guys, this is Eli Ayala here bringing you another Revealed Apologetics video. Do me a favor and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe as well as click the notification button to stay updated on upcoming video content, instructional videos, and interviews. Of course, don't forget to share as well. It's truly my hope that these videos will provide content that offers a foundation for further discussion and study. In this video, I will be addressing the question, what is presuppositional apologetics, okay? Uh, or if we want to say it like the cool kids, what is precept? Well, despite the mouthful that the word presuppositional can be, it's pretty easy to define this particular method of apologetics. But first, let me define what apologetics is for all those kind of newcomers there that are just entering the realm of Christian defense. The word apologetics has a long history, but it's also a word that's found in the Bible, most specifically in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, which reads, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Now, the Greek word in which we get the English word apologetics is, is the word apologia, and it refers to giving an answer or making a defense for something you believe to be true. Now, Christian apologetics is the practice of giving an answer or providing reasons for why we believe Christianity is true. A few other definitions that I think are, are helpful is that apologetics is the vindication of the Christian world and life view over and against the non-Christian world and life view. And my favorite definition is it is the application of Christian theology to the area of unbelief. I really think that the latter definition captures the sort of apologetic methodology that's reflected in what we've called thus far the presuppositional method in that in our attempt to use a presuppositional approach in our evangelism and apologetics, we seek to do so in a way that is itself consistent with the teachings of the Bible. It is my strong conviction that it is possible to engage in apologetics unbiblically. So, of course, we want to be sure that our method of defense is consistent with the position we seek to defend. Now, that said, what does the presuppositional approach look like, and how is it different from other approaches to apologetics, like the classical or the evidential methods? Uh, well, unlike the classical and evidential approaches, which are what I would like to call bottom-up approaches, in that they begin with some common notions and seek to argue up to the conclusion that perhaps God very probably exists or that it's more reasonable that God exists, the presuppositional approach is different in that it's more of a top-down approach. But what does that mean? Uh, it means that on the presuppositional method and form of argumentation, we're not putting forth God as a conclusion to an argument per se or a line of reasoning, but rather we're suggesting that unless one begins with God and his revelation, one would not be able to prove anything at all or know anything for that matter. So in essence, we're presenting an argument for the notion that unless one begins their reasoning and submission to the one true and living God, they wouldn't be able to make sense out of anything. Now, us presuppositionalists, or presuppers as we're often called, uh, take very seriously those statements in Scripture which tell us that it is the fear of the Lord that is the beginning of knowledge, and that in Christ are, head, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. We very much seek to engage unbelievers in a way that is consistent with these biblical truths, which of course are expanded upon in the Bible itself and in the literature put out there by other presuppositionalists. But to really understand the presuppositional apologetic approach, you really need to understand that given what the Bible teaches with regards to God, man, our relationship to God, and the effects of sin upon our minds, and the fact that the Bible teaches that there is a knowledge of God that all men have, yet suppress an unrighteousness, there is a strong emphasis upon the idea that there is no neutrality between the believer and the unbeliever. No one is neutral on the God question, and no one approaches the facts in a neutral fashion. Jesus said, whoever's not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. The presuppositionalist does not engage in apologetics as though the facts to be investigated can be investigated in a neutral and unbiased fashion. Rather, we argue that unless one is operating under Christian presuppositions about the nature of reality, how we know what we know, and how we should live our lives, one would lack any rational basis for knowledge, logic, science, history, philosophy, or anything else for that matter. Another important point to keep in mind in really understanding the presuppositional uh, methodology um, is that we completely deny the efficacy and appropriateness of autonomous reasoning. But what does that mean? Uh, what is autonomy? 
The word autonomy derives from two Greek words, auto, which means self, and namas, which means law. It basically means self-law or self-rule. Human autonomy asserts that man's reasoning is the ultimate criteria of knowledge. As Christian apologists who seek to set apart Christ as Lord in our hearts or our minds, we reject the notion of autonomy because it's impossible to be uh, uh, really a law unto ourselves with regards to the reasoning process. Indeed, we as believers acknowledge that Christ is the Lord of our reasoning. Again, we take very seriously the biblical teachings that we are to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. This is really important. Not only do we as Christians committed to the Lordship of Christ in our thinking and reasoning, avoid at all cost thinking in a fashion that expresses autonomy, but because men are created in the image of God and by extension must rely upon Him for everything, no one is able to think and reason in a truly autonomous fashion. This is really important. This is an important element of the presuppositional approach in that within the context of the apologetic encounter, when the unbeliever claims to be a law unto himself in the reasoning process, or his reasoning or argumentation seems to be implicitly assuming an autonomous posture, it's the job of the Christian apologist to point out that autonomy is impossible. And in fact, the unbeliever is relying on God even to express his apparent autonomy. Now, all this to say, presuppositional apologetics seeks to defend the Christian worldview in a way that's consistent with biblical teaching. One's method of defense must be consistent with how the Bible teaches us how we should be defending its truth claims. Furthermore, the, the presuppositionalist is committed to the biblical teaching that God and His revelation are foundational to human knowledge uh, and, and understanding. So human knowledge and understanding, it's very foundational. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The presuppositionalist who is committed to the authority and ultimacy of the triune God of Scripture does not seek to present God as a mere hypothesis to be tested by the bar of human reason, but rather re we present the triune God of Scripture as the ultimate light by which everything else is properly understood. That's to say that unless one begins with a humble submission to the triune God of Scripture, then such reasoning would be reduced to absurdity. Thus, because we present a God who provides the necessary preconditions for meaning and rationality, we do not present a probability, but a certainty, the kind of God who is so certain that to reject Him is to rely upon Him, even to rationally reject Him. Now, more can be said, but I think this briefly summarizes the presuppositional approach. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Revealed Apologetics YouTube channel and our podcast on iTunes, and be sure to click the like button and the notification bell to keep updated on upcoming videos, interviews, and instructional content. Thank you so much for watching.